Hey everybody, in this video we're going to look at two clips from the World Under 24 Championships quarter final between New Zealand and Singapore mixed. The first clip we're going to look at is this nice point of flow from Singapore. And the second clip is this controversial foot block. Singapore keep the still counts low as they move the disc around the back against the New Zealand 1-1 one -one defence. Cher is downfield and he picks his opportunity to cut hard into the space as it develops. Two cuts are aimed to the same space at the same time and Cher reacts properly to this by faking. Oh, that is a delightful inside scoop. Ong has recognised it as well and changes direction at the same time as the fake. This is a brilliant scooping inside backhand throw from Cher, punishing the loose force and he releases the disc with his right foot off the ground which means that it's nowhere near a travel and he can accelerate out of the throw pretty quickly. After releasing he looks for the return pass which is a great principle to have in your offence. After catching this one towards the line, Cher doesn't waste time pointing his hips downfield. Instead, he quickly turns them infield and hits the return pass back to Ong. Again, he's using good throw and go technique, so he's able to get the disc back immediately. And the same again, just the simple elements of looking for the return pass and using throw and go technique maintains the offense's advantage over the defense. Another thing to note at this point is how the players behind the disc are just hanging out and allowing the players downfield to keep moving the disc between themselves. Both of the defenders are expecting the return pass now so they both commit to covering it. But Ong doesn't even need to fake it because he's got Tio in the middle of the field free. So let's have a look at how Tio got free. Staying involved with the play when you're not part of the double dribble that's happening is something that a lot of players struggle with. Tio does really well here to stay connected to the play without crowding it and being always ready to offer an option. When the opportunity arises, all she has to do is stop moving and gesticulate that she wants the disc in her hand. Ong's throw and go technique isn't quite as good as Cher so he's not able to get free immediately but really Tio should have stayed looking at him and given this return pass as well. Instead there's a call, maybe a pick and the play and therefore the flow stops. Ong gets free immediately and Teo's defender runs downfield expecting her to clear through, allowing the return pass, which Ong should really take, and then the continuation would be easy to share, but instead he looks infield and then throws to share himself. Share's technique on this catch and throw is a little more sloppy and he actually travels twice, but it's not called and Ong saves the pass with an amazing layout catch. Share's gone for the return pass again, so it's a simple pop to keep the disc moving. And then the continuation pass to Hui in the end zone is similar to the one before in that she just basically has to stop moving and expect the pass to be thrown. This is a notable point because of the application of the return pass principle combined with the throw and go technique and what happens when either of those things are ignored. It's also notable that none of the defenders actually have a bid on any of these passes. There's also a lesson in here about how to play downfield when players are double dribbling what to look for and what moves to make to get the disc in your hands. The next clip we're going to look at is a controversial foot block which was kind of enraging when it happened. The dump defender peels off into an illegal double teaming position, the thrower doesn't see it, pivots out and the double teaming defender gets a foot block. Now by the letter of the rules I believe that this is a turnover because the thrower should call the double team rather than just try and throw through it. But in this situation, the thrower doesn't see the double team, so they can't call it. Now, obviously, that player breaking the rules should not be doing that. They should not be moving into an illegal position. But there isn't a part in the rules that says that this illegal positioning in the double team situation means that a turnover is negated. The spirit of the rules say that the play should resume in a manner as if there had been no infraction. In this case, if that player had not double teamed, there would not have been a foot block. So therefore, it doesn't make sense for it to be a turnover. However, this is just in the spirit of the rules and I believe it's actually a specific example given in the annotations. But by the letter of the rule, it stands as a turn. In my opinion, the players in this situation should overrule the rules, essentially, and decide between them that going against the rules in this situation makes most sense because this turnover shouldn't stand. It would be a bit less awkward if 
it was actually in the rules that this shouldn't be a turnover. Going a step further with this, why are double teams illegal? I think if any other player from any other sport looked at this, they would initially just think it was good defense. From what I've seen of the AUDL where double teams are allowed, they haven't massively changed the game in terms of defense will double team and it will cause massive problems for the offense. In fact, whenever I've seen teams try to double team, the offense has found the open player and then been able to yeah. use that to their advantage. There are two natural counters for double teaming. One is throwing overheads, which I'd love to see more of in the game. If you can throw an accurate hammer, then a double team will probably actually benefit your team. But then what about in a situation where you have a much shorter player and two much taller players double teaming them? Well, I still think it's possible to get throws out against them and break down the defense with those throws. But if you're in that situation, then it probably means that your flow has already stopped, and so therefore your offense has already done something wrong. If you keep the disc moving in under three seconds, it's very difficult for those two defenders to actually get in that position and double team you effectively. So let us know in the comments, what do you think should happen here? Do you think the players should just overrule the rules? Do you think the rules should be changed so that they say that this is not a turnover? Or do you think that the double team rule is unnecessary and if it was removed it might actually teach players to be more versatile with their offense and with their throwing? Right, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you again soon.